Alrighty, so some news of the week episode, as it's hard to believe it's already in the middle of November. I mean, November has seems to fly by very fast, and I know there's going to be still a lot of people complaining about the international break and how it's hard to believe that we are not going to have another MLS playoff game uh, for another 10 days or so. But that being said, there was definitely some interesting news that came out of MLS during this international break, and that included a signing too. So it's very rare we usually get a signing that happened in the playoffs, but the Philadelphia Union have signed Danish midfielder Sander Ingupo from Danish Super League club Lingby uh, Blue Club. I think that's how you pronounce but yeah, this is kind of interesting because, like I said, we don't usually get signing in the middle of the playoffs. It's usually after the playoffs and the offseason. That's when we really get a lot of signing. And that's when I basically do two News of the Week episodes because there's just no way. I can just do one News of the Week episode and cover everything that has happened in the past week. But yeah, this is kind of an interesting signing. I mean, I don't know a lot about this guy other than the fact that he is a Danish youth international and that maybe this is just kind of a depth signing for the union to have and also uh they didn't mention if this was a a transfer or actually a a, a signing for for free because if it is a free agency signing i think he could be be eligible uh to play in the playoffs though i also think that that probably isn't the case because then the the mls have a player roster freeze right before the playoffs so yeah i think overall most likely this is going to be a signing think about next next season and he's probably not going to be eligible playing for for the union uh in in the playoffs or at least uh from now on to to whenever the union uh will able to to finish the season which i know a lot of union fans are hoping that this will be the year that they finish the season with an mls cup now uh talking about some head coaching changes so we had another head coaching changes that happened i don't know if i i did a video uh about this i probably didn't but troy listen uh has now said he he have left the New York Red Bulls, he, of course, have exited the team, and it seems like there's already reports suggesting his replacement, and his replacement is Sandro Schwartz, as uh, he is reported to be named as the new head coach of the Red Bulls. Now, this is a guy that, you know, he hasn't really had a lot of successful coaching resume. I mean, he's been gone with a couple of clubs in the Bundesliga, but, yeah, it hasn't been great. Like, but, like he was part uh, of the Hertha Berlin team that got got relegated from the Bundesliga, so yeah, getting a guy that didn't have a lot of success in Europe and literally just relegated a, a team to the second division of German football is not really a good, good look. I mean, I've heard a lot of Red Bulls fans saying that this is kind of a huge downgrade, and consider, you know, it's sort of interesting to see why Troy Lissane decided to to exit the club, especially from what I heard that a lot of players love Troy Lissane, and they were very sad to see him him exit uh well from from his role uh so quick but yeah it's gonna be interesting to see whether uh if the hiring of sandro schwartz is actually true and you know uh, again one of the things that i'll say about about head coaches that is coming in that are not 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 popular from the fans is that he's gonna be under the microscope and under pressure straight away i mean we we're gonna see the same thing with the portland timbers when phil neville is in and I know that you know usually with a head coach you want to give him a, a chance to kind of settle in but when you are a guy that isn't really popular from the fan base you know the fan base are gonna gonna get on you uh if resort doesn't show so if resort does show from Sandro Schwartz if he do does well then yeah uh yeah maybe this turns out to be a good hiring but again just the resume that he, he does from why hear from Red Bulls fan they're not very happy to see that Troy the Sena is, is exit the team only to replace for a guy that 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 has not had a good time in terms of co coaching in, in in the Bundesliga uh, with Hertha Berlin and also during his, his short spell with Mainz too. Uh, now speaking of the Bundesliga, so uh, one of the 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 star of the the Bundesliga, Emil Frostberg, is reported to have a verbal agreement to join the New York Red Bulls. Now this is not a big surprise because uh, you know Emil Frostberg playing with RB Leipzig, you know know that there's good gonna be be times where where these teams that are owned by the Red Bulls gonna have signings that are are coming uh and go going uh which is why we see when Tyler Adams uh eventually was so, sold off uh to Europe he joined one of the the Red Bulls club and I think he's still well actually he's not with RB Leip Leipzig anymore I think he's now uh in the the Premier League I think he's either with Leeds or Bournemouth I I need to double check on that but yeah uh this is definitely an interesting signing and a signing i think is good gonna be good because i think frostburg did a really good job with rb 
be Leipzig, and that that would definitely improve that that attack that the Red Bulls desperately need this offseason. I mean, as I'll get to the Moving Forward series episode, which, you know, the good thing about this November international break is that at least it gives me time to do these Moving Forward series episodes that I don't when the playoffs is, is happening. Uh, I'll definitely talk about the Red Bulls of how they desperately need to, to add more attacking King power. I mean, that's been, been missing for this team for the past couple of years, and they're looking to try to to do that by getting a, a very decent player, very rec, rep player uh from RB Leipzig and from the Bundesliga. Now the Chicago Fire. So they have announced that they have signed sporting director Greg Kitts to a contract extension. And I can guarantee you there's a lot of Chicago Fire fans that are absolutely fuming about this this move. And I don't blame them because I think Greg Hitz has not done a great job during his time as a sporting director for the Fire. I mean when you basically are are part of the team that have repeatedly miss out on the the playoffs and pretty much uh you know when you look at the chicago fire for the past couple of years it, it just basically followed the same narrative of this fire team a team that you know looks like things were going to go well and then the hopes basically got way you, you know that 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 that, that quote from from Ted lasso is what's the hope will kill kills you yeah that's basically described the chicago fire in a nutshell in the the past couple of years and really for the past decade too this team has always been a team that looks like it's close but no no cigar and that getting a guy that's basically follow that mantra i guess maybe it fits what the chicago far needs but obviously if you're a fan of, of this team which i've said it repeatedly i feel really bad for for chicago fire fans because th this has been a team that ha ha has suffered so much fatality and, and has arguably probably been the worst team in mls for the past decades or or so and that now it seems like the 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 ownership group that they just recently got a new ownership group and and you know this ownership group have said that they are going to spend more money and and commits to winning well this is definitely not a way to do so consider again a lot of fire fans did not like great great kids and they were hoping that you know with his contract ending this year that they're eventually going to move on from him and find a new sporting director no. looks like they're they're basically stuck with him and that unless they decided to fire him yeah, either, even if they decide to part ways, this is not a good look for, for, for this Fire franchise when you just decide to get a guy that, that hasn't really done anything to improve the team, and yet you decide to reward them with a contract extension. Now, speaking of sporting director, one sporting director did face the axe is uh, Chris Hamlet, as the New York Red Bulls have announced that they have part ways with him, and this is definitely the, the right decision. I mean... Between Greg Hitz and Chris Hamlet, uh, to probably the bottom tier level in terms of sporting director ranking. I should definitely do a video talk about GMs and sporting di director and do kind of like a rankings of how good and how bad that they are. But Chris Hamlet is definitely near the bo bottom tier. You know, a lot of Red Bulls fans does not like him, and especially with the 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 way that the Red Bulls has constructed their their business, uh, it feels like this team is going back for its ever single year despite the fact that they somehow in some way still has that that longest active playoff streak comes in and even though this was the year i thought it was going to end consider how how long they spent uh below the the red line but it's definitely a, a, a beginning steps and that again the, the that's also kind of tells you that the red bulls are not only heading into a transitional period but hope that the next regime will, will get them back to where they were i mean this is a team that you know as much as i know there's that narrative of that that's so metro moment this is a team that have repeatedly been been a good team in the playoffs and to see how they have just barely limped into the playoffs the last couple of years only for for either a first round exit as we've seen for the past couple of years it, it, it's just sad sad to see i mean at, at least i guess if you're a red bulls fan at least you're happy the fact that you at least won a playoff game though i don't know if you call call the play-in game between the a and nine c count as the play playoffs like uh, but if you do, I mean, at least they won a playoff game, which is something that, that they have not done uh, for uh, a while now. I think going back to 2018 was the last time they won a playoff playoff game. Now, uh, Stephen Fry has reported that he's going to be signing a new contract extension with the Seattle Sounders. It's hard to believe Stephen Fry is 37, still kicking strong, and still look like one of the most elite elite uh, goalkeeper in the league, and probably maybe one of the most underappreciated goalkeeper. I mean, for a guy that has repeatedly getting getting uh getting clean sheets and and i think this year he finished once again uh as the the the, the goalkeeper that has the most clean sheet in mls and the fact that he didn't even get into the discussion of goalkeeper a year is kind, kind of criminal now obviously some will say well the seattle sounder has a good defense and and they basically cover him 
I don't think so. I, I think when you look at how good Stephen Fry has been, when he is asked to make those big saves, he does it every single single time. And that, again, even though he's 30, 37, uh, he is still kicking strong. And that I have no doubt that he's going to have at least three or four more years left in the tank. I mean, that's that's the good thing about goalkeepers where, you know, they're, their their career and and um, their 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 career in in this sport is definitely longer than what you see with outfield players. In fact, you know goalkeeper has the, like the long longest uh, leash in terms of their careers, and usually you don't see goalkeeper hits their prime until like they're in in their thirties. And and we have seen goalkeeper that is still going strong even in, in into their forties too. And I won't be surprised Stephen Fry could be playing into to his 40s um and that we'll see how this new contract is going to be extension is going to be i believe it's going to be a multi-year extension consider he's still considered one of the top goal goalkeeper in mls and really it's going to go down as one of the greatest goal goalkeeper alongside with the likes of uh of nick nick romano and all and, and some greatest goalkeeper to ever play in the, this league now uh alan polito has won the comeback player of the year while Matt Miaska of course named the defender of the year so we get more uh, awards that it is now being handed out you know Alan Polito well deserved to win the comeback player of the year it's quite incredible to see that for a guy that has been just so injury injury riddle for for the the past couple of years ever since he come to Sporting KC that he still are able to come back strong after injuries like you usually see with uh, uh players that have so suffered so many injuries he's not going to be always the the same especially with Alan Polito that suffered uh, a serious injury last season and still able to come back back strong and I, I will also say that I think this is the year that Alan Polito probably played the most for Sporting KC out of the previous season because it he's been really snake bit in terms of those injury curses and it, it's hard to believe that you know uh, while Alan Polito was definitely a great great player for this Sporting KC team, it was even at one point that they were thinking about selling him because, yeah, I mean, he's just so injury riddle and it's, it's just that he's just unable to stay healthy. But if there is one thing about him is that if he stays healthy, you know he's definitely one of the most dangerous number nine in the league. And then, of course, Matt Miazga winning the, the Defender of the Year. And while I know Matt Miazga does provide that kind of antagonist approach i know there's a lot of opposition fans do not like the antics that matt miaska has i think well he well he de de deserved to win the defender year and i also love the the that that matt miaska played that personality because you know in mls you know we, we talk about all the good good guys and all the all, all the fan favorites I would like to see the league to have some 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 uh, of the players that are just kind of anti fan favorite and kind of almost act like like a villain. Something similar to what we saw with David Ochoa a couple of years ago when he was a guy that was very infamous of being kind of that vil villain and kind of a guy that well is is well well beloved in in the his team fan base. They are pretty much be loved when when it comes to to uh, opposition fans and I think Matt Miazga is definitely uh, a preach to, to that that level I mean he's a great defender but he is a guy that if you're facing against him as an opposition fan you just simply hate him because of his antics that he he, he does now uh the Portland Timbers they have announced that uh they are going to have their local home improvement company Debella as their New Jersey sponsor now this is kind of interesting because I fought uh last year they announced that Dutch Bros were going to be their their New Jersey sponsor. I guess now they decided to change change one, and I feel like you know, uh, no offense to Debella, but I would love to see Dutch Bros as, as their Jersey sponsor. It just kind of fits fits well uh, when I see them have the the Dutch Bros on their tra training kit, and it, 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 it serves nicely. But you know, uh, I I think this is going to be interesting to see how it's going to look. And also, you know, whenever you ha have a jersey sponsor change, especially one that it's been a along the jersey for a very long time. I mean, Alaska Airlines has been on the Portland Timber jersey for such a long time that I'm going to definitely mi miss that jersey, even though I still ha have it in my closet. But it's going to be interesting to see how this is going to go. And I'm also thinking about making a video talking about all the, the jersey sponsor and what some are, because I know there are some jersey sponsors that are kind of shady business, but there are also some some interesting in jersey sponsor that are part of uh, big companies. I think uh, probably the, the one that I can come up right on top of my head that is part of that big company is Minnesota United with their tar Target uh, jersey sponsor. Though, again, uh, when tar Target basically sponsored Minnesota United, one of the big criticisms when they decide to put their that their logo on their jersey is that it kind of, it kind of looks weird it's the fact that 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 minnesota united jersey always can't dance a hell like a target logo and that it just kind of doesn't fit fit well 
uh, on a jersey. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting to see how DeBella is going to look uh, on the, the, the new new jerseys that the, the Portland Tim Timbers has. Now, uh, moving on in terms of the next news, and actually now talk about something that aren't, aren't kind of related to MLS, but kind of is still, is Chattanooga FC. So they have announced that they are joining the MLS Next Pro next year. Now, this has been a team that's been lingering in the NISA. And, uh, you know, one thing about the NISA and why a lot of people hated that league is that it's a very poorly run, run league. And especially with all the controversy that's gone on with the NISA and also some of their their club, uh, you kind of had a sense that for Chattanooga FC, one of the biggest team in the NISA and one of the more well-known team in the lower league is have to move on to another another league league to to certify its legitimacy and that you know joining the MLS Next Pro is kind of interesting. I would assume that you know if there was a, a league that they would would go up in terms of so joining is is USL Championship. I mean, I I was thinking like. With the way way that that this team is, and with the way that they have a lot lot of good attendance, uh, the the USL Championship would would, would perfectly fit fits this team. Now there are some discussion that they should also join the USL League One, but Chattanooga already have a USL League One team. They already have the the Red Wolves that is currently play in the USL League One. So I don't think USL League One is going to ha have two Chattanooga team, uh, uh, even even if they want to make a ride. Uh, Chattanooga Derby that is happening in the USL League One, but for them to join the MLS Next Pro was interesting, and this is also kind of interesting that I've seen a lot of these well-known kind of, kind of lower league teams that are now joining the MLS Next Next Pro. We saw Rochester Rhino does that; it didn't quite work out for them. And then recently we heard Jacksonville Amara, a very very well-known team in the lower leagues that that have played in the NASL and so forth, joining that. And it's going to be interesting to see how it's going to go because, you know, this league is more known for, for development. And, again, you know, if you're a fan of Chatt Chattanooga, I don't know if you're you're going to be excited to join a, a development league rather than maybe the USL Championship that legitimately has started to, to, to be, become a league that can really rival MLS, especially with the plan that the USL Championship have. I heard they're, they're planning to to adapt the, the European calendar, decide to have the – the, the season starting in August and ending in May. And also, there's even talks that there is going to be promotion and relegation in the U.S. So, uh, motto. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see that, you know, how, how that's going to, to work out. And that, again, I feel like for Chattanooga, for a team like, like they're, well, no, they, they probably should have joined the USL Championship rather than the MOS Next Pro. Speaking of the USL Championship, so I want to congratulate the Phoenix Rising of winning the USL Championship after they beat the, the Charlton Battery on a PK shootout. By the way, that PK shootout is probably one of the most uh, MLS after dark, or as you want as you want to call it in this play, the USL after dark kind of, kind of PK shootout you ever see. I mean, there was some of the worst PK sh uh, that was taken in that PK shootout, but nevertheless, the Rising still were able to win it. The PK shootout and also winning their first ever title in their, their their franchise history, which I feel like this year was kind of a shock. The fact that they won it because I know the Phoenix Rising has always known to be a a good team in the Western Conference. Though the last couple of years they have kind of fall falling off off a, a little bit, but this year was kind of a surprise. Considering I think they finished sixth in the Western Conference. I still remember uh, when I went to watch watch them play against Sacramento, how they got absolutely destroyed in that game, especially in the first half. Like, like they found themselves 4 nothing down in, in the first half of that game. And little did we know that I, I would be later seeing, seeing a team that win the, the USL Championship uh, that find themselves 4 nil down against one of the best teams in the, the USL Championship. Which, by the way, speaking of Sacramento, the Rising did beat Sacramento in, in the, the semi final, which I was kind of disappointed because I, I want Sacramento to win so I can actually attend a USL championship final uh, in person without, without have to, to do crazy Z travel. Uh, but the fact that they were able to win win it, I mean, this this is definitely a big, big Cinderella story and kind of a very unexpected year that I would expect a team that have always come close but no cigar in, in the USL ch championship and, and them having all this good team that this would be the team that win the first title. But Nevertheless, congratulations to them, and that you can even maybe make a comparison that their 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 uh, playoff run is kind of almost mirror to what we see with with the Colorado Rapids did in 2010, where I don't think anybody were expecting the Colorado Rapids uh, was going to win win the championship. And that's not saying that Charleston Battery is is a no slot. This team, Charleston Battery, is a very good team. They spend most of the time in the top standings of the USL Championship too. 
But again, you know, the fact that Phoenix is a, able to win despite the fact that this year was kind of a mediocre year for, for them, definitely a very su surprise winner and something very similar to what we saw the Rapids did where nobody expected the Rapids to win it in 2010 and yet they made a Cinderella run and able to, to win the whole thing. Now, uh, moving on into the last news. So the city of Everett and the New England Revolution have entered an agreement over a professional soccer stadium. Now, before I mention a little further about this news, uh, just, just for those people that know, this is not Everett, uh, Washington we're talking about. This is Everett, Massachusetts that we are talking about. So if you're a Seattle Sounders fan and you were exciting that maybe your your team is finally going to get a soccer-specific stadium, no, uh, that's not... That's not what this news is all about. Although, again, if Seattle was ever going to get their soccer-specific stadium, it would make no sense that they decide to have it at Everett, Washington, Consider, You know, even though I don't li live in Seattle, I visit there uh, pretty often, and I know Everett is not anywhere close to, to Seattle. It's it's one of the suburbs, but it's kind of way up there in north, about like 30 miles away, and that it, it just doesn't make sense that the Seattle Sounders decided to have, have their soccer-specific stadium way up there and especially when they're they've been already talking about how they're going to build their soccer specific stadium right near where their their sporting complex is in the start fire starting sporting complex just just uh east of the the city but uh one thing for sure for the new england revolution you know again this has been a team that's been having a lot of discussion about the soccer specific stadium and that no knowing after what we saw with nycfc getting themselves a soccer specific stadium I feel like that kind of now puts pressure on on New England that, you know, out of all these teams that are still kind of playing in, in kind of MLS 1.0 style kind of multi-purpose NFL stadium, the New England Revolution is definitely that that team. I mean, they, they absolutely need them a, a new new soccer-specific stadium. They need to move on uh, from, from Gillette Stadium, even though I know the refs are, are partially owned by Robert Kraft, who also owned the New England Patriots, uh, and that's why it makes sense that they decided to the, the ground share the the stadium just feels like this team need, needs to move in the Boston market and it and you know I I think Everett uh I don't know exactly where it is but it's probably close close to Boston and that that you know they they want to to finally get this soccer specific stadium done so that you know we know this Revs team does does have have a good fan fan base I mean you know look at this season and how how they they they're still getting like like at times twenty thousand or even thirty thousand fans showed up in in tenants they get themselves a soccer specific stadium I, I can have a feeling that 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 stadium will be rocky i mean just look at all these teams that that have, have put you played mos 1.0 stadium and eventually find themselves a new soccer specific stadium you can definitely feel like the atmosphere is much more intense than when they are playing in, a, in an outdated mos 1.0 stadium so yeah for the sake of the new england Rev Hopefully they will eventually get this deal done because yeah, this has been a long overdue. A lot of Reds fans have been demanding their teams to get a soccer specific stadium uh for a while now, and it seems like we're getting pretty close that so that could be be a, a reality sooner than later. But there you have it. That is pretty much it in terms of looking at all these news uh from this past week. As always, let me know in the comments below what do you think of these news and if there's any news I didn't mention here on the board, let me know in the comments as well. But until then, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you like, smash the subscribe button, and yeah, I of course will see you guys next time.